All right, number 20. So we've got an equation x equals 6a over b minus a. And it tells us that each of these layers have been rounded to a certain number of significant places or decimal place. So when they say that, it means that it must have been something else before. Something bigger than three sig figs or something bigger than one decimal place. Now, it wants us to work out the upper bound for the value of x. So in other words, maximize this. Give your answer as a decimal correct with three significant figures. All right. Nice little trick for these questions. So what I usually do to know how to maximize this value to get an up bound for x, we need to firstly maximize the top half and minimize the bottom half. Why? It's because the greater the top and the lower the bottom, the greater the end result. Now, how do we maximize 6a? Well, we need to find an upper bound for 6a. So we need to find upper, upper bound for a. So let's just do our bounds for a and b first before anything else. So always say apply that here. Where a and b is always less than equal on the left and great and less than to the right. So uh, on a, we know it's 3.46. I always write 3.46 here and 6.3 here. And then I just added 5 to both of them. So 5 and 5. So this tells us that for a to be true, to be rounded down to 3.46, it has to be just less than 3.465, whatever, to 3 sig fix. So that means on the left hand side, it will be 3.455. The trick is always to reduce this figure by 1. And same thing here. If it's 6.35 here, reduce this figure by 1 to get 6.25. Because rounding this up to one decimal place, this 5 is obviously 5 or bigger. So this will round this 2 to a 3. And because it's equal to it, it's possible. But yeah, that's all you need to know. Now, looking at what we need, we just need to maximize A. So we need to pick this value here. And we need to minimize the bottom, B minus A. So to minimize B minus A, we need to have the smallest difference. And the smallest difference is possible if we pick the smaller value of B minus the bigger value of A, because that has the smallest gap. These two are closest to each other. You can't pick any other combination because the gap ain't as small. So therefore, we can say the upper bound of X equals six times the upper bound of A over, or what is it, the lower bound of B minus the upper bound of a okay so just replace these values so we want this value for a and this value for b plug this in the calculator and you should get an answer of 7.46 two three significant figures and that's it guys so the diagram shows two similar bottles a and b all right bottle a has surface area of 240 and bottle b has a surface area of 540 and a volume of 2025 centimeter cubed now here they want us to work out the volume of A. Alright, cool. So this, this is just a question about um, proportionality, yeah? Because they tell us they got similar bottles. So it's kind of like similar triangles, yeah? Now all you need to know is just two nice formulas, yeah? We need to know that um, the ratio or the proportion of B to A, so let's say the surface area of B to the surface area of A must equal some, some kind of scale factor, yeah? Some scale factor squared. If you're dealing with areas, it will be squared. And we also need to know that the volume of B to the volume of ball A must be the same scale factor, but cubed. And if you had length, it will be the same thing, but just scale factor power 1. Okay? Now, all they want us to do is basically plug in everything and see how to get A, yeah? So, let's do, um, let's work, let's use the first equation here. Let's plug everything into this equation here, because we've got most of the values. So, we know what B, in this, the surface area B in A is. It's 540 over 240, and it must equal a scale factor squared. So plugging this into your calculator, and then square rooting to get scale factor, you should get a scale factor of 3 over 2. And that's it. Or, or you can say 1.5, yeah, to be more exact. Now, to work out the volume A, we use the same formula, so plug everything back in. Since we've got the volume of B, we can say, all right, the volume of B is 2025 over the volume of A is what we want must equal that scale factor 1.5 to the power of 3. And all you do is just make VA the subject. And to do it, you multiply VA across and divide 1.5 cubed across. So you're going to have something like uh, 2025 over 1.5 cubed equals VA. And then when you, when you put this in the calculator, you should just get a straight up answer of um, 600 centimeters cubed. And that's it, guys. Question done. All right, number 22. 
So it says write 5 plus 12x minus 2x squared in the form of this, where a, b, and c are integers. Okay, this particular form is, is a one of something known as completing the square, yeah? So completing the square. Now, to move something into that particular form, and by the way, this is not a usual form, we should always rewrite this in terms of uh, the standard quadratic formula, yeah? So let's go put this in order, yeah? So we've got minus 2x squared plus 12x plus 5. Okay, so now we're going to try and attempt to complete the square and return it to that form, yeah? So what I would firstly do is always get rid of the coefficient in front of x squared, yeah? So we want to factorize minus 2. So let's just take minus 2 out for a second, yeah? And make one big bracket. So by factorizing minus 2 out, we're going to divide every single term by minus 2. So this means that the first term here is now just x squared, just like we want. Dividing 12 by minus 2, you get minus 6x. Dividing plus 5 by minus 2, well, you can just write minus 5 over 2. Okay. Now, let's ignore the minus 2 for a second, yeah? And we're going to attempt to complete the square on this bit, yeah? So to complete the square, all you've got to do is just look at the first two terms, copy out the same term without the square. So you're going to have x minus, then you, then you half the 6 and get 3. Wrap it in the square, copy out the third term, and then subtract it by minus 3 squared. So subtract minus 3 squared and of course copy everything back as well so oops copy the big bracket minus two big bracket and now we just want to just times everything by minus two and by the way we're not going to expand x minus three squared because looking at the general form they want as x plus c all squared so something needs to be in a bracket and this this is pretty much the right bit so let's go ahead and times everything by minus two yeah so we've got minus two times x minus three squared that's just minus two times x minus 3 squared, just stick it on, and then times minus 2 against all of these law, yeah? So what I would do, put all of these terms in your calculator, then that times it by minus 2, and you should get plus 23. And that's it, guys, we're actually one more step away. So now looking back at the general form, they want it to be a constant first, so that means 23 should be in front. So just putting up here, should be 23, and then minus... 2 times x minus 3 squared. And yep, that's it. This is the end of the question, guys. We've actually completed the square. All right, guys, number 23. So the diagram shows a solid pyramid A, B, C, D, E with a horizontal base. So that's the ground. The base B, C, D, E of the pyramid is the square of side 10. All right, so that's quite useful. The vertex A of the pyramid is vertically above the center O. So it's vertically above, meaning... This is perpendicular to the ground, yeah? Okay, such that, all right, such that AB equals AC and so on. So every length is the same. So every single diagonal length is the same too. Now, the total surface area of the pyramid is 360 centimeters squared. So that's the area of all the faces. Work out the size of the angle between AC and the base BCDE. Give your answer correct to three simple figures. So AC and the base. So we're trying to find, basically, to make it easy, if we just draw a diagonal line cut into the base, we want to find this angle here. And that's how we do it, yeah? So let's call this x. Now, to get that, we need a few things, yeah? We need to firstly know this little diagonal length here, which is perpendicular to this length here. So this is actually a right angle triangle. So let me just plot it here. So we've got O, C, and A. We know, we don't actually know any lengths. Well, we need, we want to find x here, but we've got a vertical height h, but we don't know this diagonal length. But one way to get diagonal length is to realize that O is in the center. The reason why we know it's in the center, oh, okay, because it tell, tells us, obviously. But what we could do is draw, let's say, a diagonal line across here, yeah? This would be the midpoint. Well, a bit more to the center, like here, I guess, yeah? This would be the midpoint. And this is, of course, also right-angled. And we know that this has a length of 5. And this one also has a length of 5. So we can actually work out this length here using Pythagoras' theorem. And then once we got this length, we can also work out this height. And having that height, well, you're pretty much done. So what we could say, we can have firstly work out this small triangle here. We got a triangle of length 5, 5, and call this length uh, y. Using Pythagoras' theorem, it would be 5 squared plus 5 squared equals y squared. So this is 25, so this is 50, so therefore, y equals the square root of 50 if you solved it, okay? And this would go over here, the length of OC, because that's the OC we just found. 
All right, so the next crucial piece of information here is the fact that we can call any of these long diagonal sides from the top of the pyramid to the bottom, to the base, Ds, yeah? So let's call all these D. So I'm going to call this long one D, so this must be a D, okay? Next, to work out the value D, we can start using the final piece of information, which is that the fact that the total surface area is 360. So what is this total surface area? Well, we know that it consists of a square at, on its base, which has an area of 100 because 10 times 10 is 100. Plus we've got four triangles. And we know that it has um, a base of 10, but we don't know its height. In fact, we know that the height is actually, well, it's not D, that's the diagonal height. Let's call this high, I don't know, really use the letter H, haven't we? Let's call it L, why not? Let's use the letter L. So the height is, height is L and the width is uh, 10. So therefore, plug in everything we know, surface area is 360, must equal the area of a square, which is 100, plus 4 times the area of a triangle, which is um, half times the base times the, the height, which is L. And now, just try and tidy this all up. So subtracting 100 across, you get 260. Tidying up this part here, so you've got 4 times a half, which is 2, times 10, which is 20, so 20L. And then finding L, just divide 20 across. You're going to get L equals, well, 260 over 20 is 13. Okay, not bad. So that's an important figure right here, yeah? So remember, that is the vertical height, yeah? So just updating everything here. So let's, let's redraw this triangle, yeah? It's ACD. So you've got ACD. So guys, with these problems, it's always good to take your time, yeah? So ACD, width is 10. Vertical height is 13. We know also the fact that the half length up to here is 5. And one thing we can notice, the only way to obtain this diagonal D, the one we label D, is to use Pythagoras' theorem and just take this small triangle out. So guys, there's a lot of Pythagoras involved here, isn't it? So you've got 5, you've got 13, and you're trying to work out D. So using Pythagoras, we can do, we can say, all right, wait. Yep, so using Pythagoras, we're going to have 5 squared plus, yep, 5 squared plus 13 squared equals D squared. Basically, I, I paused for a second because I was thinking this must be a 5, 12, 13 triangle, but it can't be. Because if this was 12, then this would have been 13. Yeah, just some Pythagoras rules, I remember. So therefore, dealing with this, so 5 squared plus 13 squared, just adding them up in a square root of your answer, you're going to get something like 194. So in the square root of 194 is just root 194. By the way, guys, just leave your answers in thirds, yeah? Don't bother, like, putting them into decimals or you can really screw your final answer. Now, now, let's see. Let's just, let's just update everything, here. Yeah? So we're trying to find, what exactly? We're trying to work out the size of angle AC, yeah? This angle X. We've got this triangle that we pulled out earlier. We found D. So this D is now root 194. All right, perfect. We're on the last step. So using this triangle, we can use Sokotoa now. Finally, something decent. Soka Toa. Right. So to use Soka Toa, we just pick two things as involved in terms of length. Well, if the angle is X, this must be opposite, but we don't need that. We need the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So H and A. And only thing that's H and A or A and H is K. So if we're using K, K tells us what? So let's have a look. K tells us that we're going to have cos of the angle, so cos of the angle x, let me scroll up a bit, equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent which is root 50 over hypotenuse which is root 194. Whew, can't believe we reached this far guys, yeah? And taking the cos inverse of this, you're going to get an angle of 59.5 degrees. And that's it guys, this question is done. And here we are guys, number 24. So, what do we have? A box contains marbles, all right? Four of them are red and the rest of the marbles are yellow. Okay, so let's define some things here. Yeah? So you got four is red and the rest is yellow. Let's call it, let's call them N. So, okay, so this means the total number of marbles must be four plus N, okay? Red plus yellow. Now, Antonia, Antonia takes at random a marble from the box and does not replace it. Okay, so when she takes it, she keeps it, okay? So it decreases. Sergio then takes at random a marble from the box. 
the property that Antonia and Sergio both take a yellow marble is 0 0.7. Okay, so this is a property that one takes yellow and the other also takes yellow, and it must be 0 0.7. Work out how many marbles were originally in the box. All right, so not too bad. So to do these kind of questions, all you need to do is figure out what is property picking a yellow algebraically, yeah, and then yellow again. Well, to get a property of yellow and then yellow again, first things first, we have... How many yellows? We have n yellows. So we have n out of a total of 4 plus n yellows, okay? And now, the second yellow, so it always multiply when we go across, we now have one less yellow, so we have n minus 1 yellows, yeah? Because imagine you had 10 yellows, and if, the, if you have if you take one out, you're going to have 9 yellows, or 10 minus 1 yellows. And the same thing applies. This means the total is now 4 over n, 4 plus n minus 1, because you took one yellow. And that's it. So all you're going to do now is deal with this. And by the way, guys, 4 to 1 is 3, yeah? so you can rewrite as 3 plus n. Okay, and all of this is supposed to apparently equal 0 0.7. And yeah, now all we do is literally just deal with this equation and you're done. Find the value n and you found it. So multiplying these um, fractions across, when you, more, when you multiply fr fractions, you times horizontally. So it'd be n times n minus 1. We're going to have n squared minus n over, and then 4 plus n times 3 plus n. Well, that's just a double bracket, yeah? That's 4 plus n times 3 plus n. All of that equals 0 0.7. Now, dealing with the, the bottom half, yeah? So let's deal with the bottom half for a second. So expanding the bracket, you're going to have 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 4 times n is 4n. n times 3 is 3, and so that gives you a total of 7n, plus n times n is n squared. All right, so that's just the bottom half, yeah? Now what we're going to do, we're going to multiply this across here, yeah? so clear the fraction. So times in the denominator across to 0 0.7, we're going to have a total equation of on the left side of n squared minus n equals 0 0.7 times this lot, yeah? Okay, so 0 0.7 times 12 is 8.4 plus 0 0.7 times 7n, that's going to give us 4.9n plus 0.7n squared. All right, almost done. All we're going to do now is rewrite this as a quadratic, yeah? So we're going to multiply, we're going to move everything to one side. So let's move these two to the right, yeah? So subtracting n squared and adding n, we're going to have now, I'm, I'm plus I'm going to rewrite this in terms of the right order, yeah? So 0 0.7 take away 1, is going to give us minus 0.3n squared plus 5.9n plus 8.4, and that should all equal 0. So all I did just move this to the right here, yeah? and I just put the equal on that side as well. And now to solve this, just use the quadratic formula here. Yeah? So according to the quadratic formula, and I'm just going to do it on this side here. Yeah? Actually, let me see if I can move the screen a bit. Nah. Oh yeah, I can. So quadratic formula tells us that we have minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac yeah? all over 2 times a, where each of these letters a is minus 0 0.3, B is 5.9, and what's it? C is 8.4. And plugging in these values, you're going to have an N value of minus 4 over 3, or N equals 21. And now since, you know, we're dealing with how many marbles, and we know N must be a whole number, one of the answers cannot be a fraction. Yeah, so this, this is wrong. N is negative, so it doesn't make sense. So that means that the total number of marbles, yeah, so remember, they want a total number, will be this. So it'll be 4 plus n. Since n is 21, it'll be 4 plus 21. And that gives a, a total number, a total count of 25 marbles. And that's it, guys. Hope this video helped. And um, if you enjoyed it, you know, give me a comment, let me know. And but otherwise, I shall see you guys next time. Ciao.